everyone <laughs> to this uh, presentation and critique day here at Edward UX. I'm Rupen, one of the volunteers here uh, with Edward UX, and I'm uh, volunteering with the creative team where we work really hard to bring design challenges like this to all of you. Uh, so I'm super excited to kick off this first day of three days of presentation and critiques. So all participants who participated on this design challenge, I know you all have worked really hard uh, for the last couple of weeks, uh, and we get a chance to get a sneak peek on a few of those teams and what they worked on throughout the last uh, few weeks on this design challenge. Uh, so for those of you who might be first time joining the event at Iter UX, just a bit about us. Uh, so we are an open Discord community who helps uh, your designers learn, connect, and grow your career. So people of all levels are welcome. Uh, we host weekly virtual meetups and coffee chat sessions with uh, guest speakers who share their expertise and experience on a variety of UX topics. Uh, we also host feedback sessions for your design work, your portfolio and resume. And we're also looking forward to constantly hosting new and better whiteboarding and design challenges. So today um, is the first day of presentation and critique day. Um, so we will have team 15 and team five present. So team 15 will go first. They'll have 20 minutes to present, followed by a 10 minute feedback from our mentor today, who is Halik. He's the UX lead at Applied Digital. So he'll be providing the feedback um, on those presentation for 10 minutes. And team five will go second, again, 20 minutes for presentation, followed by 10 minutes from feedback by Halik as well. And thank you so much, Halik, for joining this workshop and you know, giving us insights on how we can take this presentation to the next level. So today is just the day day one. Uh, tomorrow we will have the second day of presentation and the final day will be on Thursday. Um, we will also have a wrap up party for the CX Design Challenge coming up on September 28th, followed by a workshop on transitioning from graphic design to UX design. So save these dates on your calendars. Uh, you can also look out for these announcements on our Discord channels uh, to keep up with what's coming up uh, with Iterate UX. Um, so if you do like uh, what we do here at Iterate UX, please support us by sending a donation on coffee to keep our services going. So all of us here are volunteers. So every donation you make goes straight back into the community uh, and any amount is greatly appreciated. So before we begin, just a friendly reminder to please mute yourself once the presentation begins. Uh, you can make use of the chat to you know, give some words of encouragement, any feedback as well. Um, you can continue this engagement on our Discord channels and make sure you follow us on a variety of other channels as well, social media channels to keep up with what's up and coming here at Iterate UX. So that's it from me. I'd like to now pass it on to team 15 to go first. Um, so yeah, you can start sharing your screen and yeah, the mic is yours. Hi, this is our app Level Up Eight with our team members, myself, Rocio, Lashmi, Angela, and Jacqueline. We decided to choose health and fitness from the given prompts with the gamification aspect, helping users become less overwhelmed. Thank you, Rocio. With the topic selected, we started this project by dissecting it further and exploring the current situation. By discovering what meal planning, finding healthy recipes, and what gamification solves, we can establish if we were on the correct path and confirm the best approach for this project. We discovered valuable insights after reading six different articles on healthy recipes, meal planning, and gamification. Some of the benefits that we found were that individuals who do meal plan, they find that they save money because they have less takeout and splurges through the week. They can also adjust the plans to account for goals and dietary restrictions that they have. Meal planning and a focus on finding healthy recipes can support individuals to increase fruits and vegetables by creating a balanced diet. Some barriers that they find are lack of time in their busy schedule, having to adapt to a new routine, and the struggle to see it as a lifestyle change rather than a diet. 
Some notable tips that we found were that starting small and simple can be a benefit. Also having night themes to create fun, predictable meals such as Meatless Monday or Taco Tuesday. Being flexible and willing to adjust to help improve the process is another big benefit. Through the research with gamification, we noticed that there were quite a few different types that we can explore from reward-based systems, interactive challenges, virtual pro progress, or to incentivize them to continue through the app. Some other things we noticed was a social aspect of fostering a sense of community, education through storytelling, and a positive outlook on food habits. While 47% of the individuals who completed our survey were already eating healthy, we confirmed that the top two barriers to regularly eating healthy were time and mixed household preferences. More participants reported that they actively meal plan and focus on home cooked meals. Only a third of those participants reported having unplanned meals outside of their home. All the participants either meal plan currently or they would like to start meal planning. This shows us that the individuals associate meal or home cooked meals directly with eating healthy. This, however, wasn't enough for us to base our project on. We wanted to dive deeper to explore these responses to ensure that we were still on the correct path. To do this, we conducted five different user interviews to get more detail and to hear from our per uh, participants' perspectives. Healthy lifestyles, body and body image were, were of the top motivators, while adjusting to the schedules and prioritizing tasty, healthy foods were their goals. Busy schedule or not, these individuals do not want to spend more time than they need to in the kitchen. Through these interviews, we gained insights to discover the problems behind the scenes and find the best approach to implement this project. To do so, during these interviews, we focused on the following questions. How do they get motivated? How do they overcome the barriers stopping them from eating healthy? And how do they improve their diet and stop the splurging habits that they currently have? With the answers to these questions and more, we created affinity mapping to establish common themes through from these interviews. In this process, we found meal tendencies had were home cooked meals more often than not. However, individuals do create cheat days or cheat meals throughout the week. Meal goals were focusing on reducing sugar, snacking, and redu reduction of processed foods. Each person desired a healthy meals that their family also enjoys. With meal planning, we see a focus on taste again, along with the ease and attention to limited schedules. When a participant derails from the meal plan that they had in motion, they say, the majority stated that they had to accept that and work harder to reinstate the plan. Regarding healthy lifestyles, it is a balance of routine and making small changes. Goals for a healthy lifestyle were confirmed to feel better, have less drowsiness, improve body image, and to have more time with their family. When we dove deeper into gamification and recipe apps, we discovered a strong excitement to see the progress and to have a sense of community. No one wanted to start something that would take a long time to do or take away from time that they wanted to put elsewhere. When it came to finding healthy recipes, there was concerns about having the ingredients on hand that the recipe was calling for. Through all this research, our goal was to focus our app on the areas that would benefit our users and to, our, and to become a partner with them in their journey to maintain a balanced diet. Now back to you, Rocio. I think, I think you're on mute. Sorry. Sorry, with this app, we believe it can alleviate the stress that can happen when planning out what to cook and can, and now people can focus on what they enjoy. How might we support our users by reducing the amount of time they spend on in the kitchen? By creating a planned meal, it takes away having to think about choice, reducing the amount of time and this decision magnitude. One thing that was consistent in each interview was which was a problem with time 
the amount of time they had each had. Now, now passing it to Jacqueline. Thank you, Rocio. Jenny is our persona character. She is a tech savvy, foresight engineer. Her life is so busy because she has a busy work schedule. That's a result in heavily relying on food delivery apps. Jenny is looking for healthy and time-saving meal solutions. With simple ingredients, Lassa save her time, her more time to accompany her husband and friends. Next. Jenny usually brainstorms recipes for dinner when she is on her way home after getting work. Getting up work. Sometimes she would do some research for dinner when sorry, uh, sometimes she would do some research for her recipes. But the first time she could only find some recipes. That would take her around 45 minutes. After that, she kept she kept looking for healthy recipes, but all she would she found were easy to prepare recipes that didn't have the, the ingredients in her fridge. Jenny was disappointed. However, she didn't give up on researching for a good recipe for her dinner. Finally, she found some healthy and time-saving recipes. Nowadays, she enjoys preparing and cooking her healthy dinner every day. That's the best to Lakshmi. Thank you, Jacqueline. Um, so keeping our persona in mind, we uh, started sketching out a few ideas. Uh, in response to users' needs, we compiled a list of features that we might uh, we should consider while designing our app. These include uh, dietary restrictions, uh, time constraints, meal planning strategies, uh, uh, finding friends, families, or like-minded people together, uh, and also some kind of a reward or a game aspect to keep them on track and motivated. So with that in mind, uh, we designed a Level Up Eats, a meal planning app where you can only find recipes that are quick and easy to make. We give you an option to browse through our app as a guest or sign up and level up your meal planning game. Let's go through our design. Uh, for that, let's bring Jenny back, the, our persona. Imagine uh, Jenny is back home after a long day at work and uh, want to whip up something quick but healthy for dinner. She's not sure what to cook. So how can we help Jenny overcome this frustration? How can we reduce her uh, decision fatigue? How can we help her cook something healthy uh, in a very short period of time and, um, and have her enjoy the rest of the evening with her family? So that's when she checks out Level Up Eats, which her friend suggested. Uh, Jenny downloads the app, uh, continue as a guest, uh, lands on the home page uh, that she can browse through a variety of meal options. Uh, if you want to narrow down the search, she can uh, narrow down the results. She can uh, she has an option to search or filter. Uh, she can also find recipes on the basis of the ingredients in hand by pressing the pantry supply, which take her to a page where she can uh, add ingredients in just one click. Should she find a recipe of her interest, she can add that uh, to favorites by pressing the heart and save the recipe for another day, or she can add um, it to a calendar by clicking on the link uh, that's placed under the recipe title uh, and assign that recipe to a uh, date to make her meal planning easy. In a, a different scenario, uh, Jenny is in love with the app and decides to be a member of Level Up Eat family. Uh, she wants to up her meal planning game. Or if she wants to build a niche community where she can feel safe, um, where she can open up uh, and seek advice and uh, find genuine support from people, uh, she can hit the community button in the navigation bar and explore various features like uh, be part of a discussion group or join different challenges or take part in a meal planning streak. This way, she feels more connected and can understand what help what help others with the meal planning, or maybe she can share her own experience with others. Yeah. So over to you, Jacqueline, to uh, to talk about the design system. Thank you, Lakshmi. For design system, we chose yellow and orange as our main color palettes. 
Yellow is a blend of yellow uh, of sorry, orange is a blend of yellow and orange and red colors. Red naturally lends itself to food a smaller appetizing color, which some stimulates our stomach and the appetite. Why did we choose yellow as the other color? Because it's considered the happiness of color and it's widely utilized in food industry. As you can see, we put one the psychology of colors pictures next to our design decision. Yellow and orange both have a lot of positive meanings and widely used in food in the in food products. Except for using yellow and orange as our main color palette, we also choose white, light, and darker gray colors. We selected the poppings as our main typography for our app. For navigation parts, we use a all gray, all dark gray col colors as the online icon. And after clicking, you can, after clicking, you can see um, the color turns to, turns to, sorry, turns to um orange. For icon system, the, yeah, we use orange as our online, as our online icons. Field boxes, we chose dark gray as an email address and password color. We also use light gray to um to guide our user field in layer information. For button section, we use white as a background color and gradient to yellow and orange color as the icon color. After tapping, you can see the color, the background color turns to orange-ish color. For city buttons, we selected darker gray as the main text color. Before clicking the CTA button, we use a yellow as the online color. And after tapping it, the background turned to yellow color. Let's pass to Lakshmi. All right. Um, so throughout the design process, our team has consistently placed a strong emphasis on uh, prioritizing the user's needs. As a result, we have developed a platform that offers a wide range of meal options with uh, prep time indicators, as well as an option to search or filter to ensure that the users only see meals uh, that are in line with their specific diet or meal plan needs. Additionally, uh, we have integrated uh, features to enable uh, users to include friends, families, or support groups uh, to foster a sense of community that will serve as uh, a source of motivation for them. Angela, you can wrap it up now. Thank you, Lashmi. To conclude, our take on this topic and subsequent design is not only founded in the initial research, but it can be an easy to use tool to help individuals who want to maintain a balanced diet. With that said, future usability testing and design adjustments would be our next steps to confirm and improve our solution. We would also love to strengthen our gamification feature further. Time was certainly the most significant challenge that we faced. We would have loved to work through multiple rounds of usability testing and to also finish out that prototype for a strong completion. Through this design challenge, we are excited to work as a team, collaborate our ideas, and to funnel them into one solid, cohesive design. It was great to begin with an unbiased approach, stepping back at the beginning to ensure that we were creating something that would ultimately be beneficial for our users. In this project, our communication, research, design, and presentation skills were strengthened, and we are all thankful for this opportunity. As this presentation ends, we would like to sincerely thank Iterate UX for putting this challenge together and for your time and attention during this presentation. Any feedback and insights would be incredibly helpful to us. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Team 15. That was a really great presentation. <clears throat> uh, finished early on time as well. So bonus points for that. Uh, so Hali, I'd love to pass it on to you. Oh, yeah, awesome. Uh, can you guys share the screen again? By the way, great presentation. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for showing me your work. Look really good. 
if you guys can bring up, yeah, just bring it up. A uh, couple of feedback or questions, even I would say is, uh, if you guys go to the beginning, um, you guys presented your research portion. Yeah, uh, yeah, let's just move on. Slide number two, slide number three, yeah. The topic and yeah, it's, it's good that you guys are showing the secondary research and everything. Uh, but I, I would have loved to see the, the research approach up front because you guys started with the secondary research. So I just totally assumed that you guys did not have any kind of primary research planned out. That's what I thought. So uh, mm -hmm. I just had my mind like, oh, okay, they have not done any research. They've just like, you know, like use some of the tools online too. And um, that's point number one. Uh, let's move on to the, the, to the primary research. That I'm guessing you guys did interviews and supplemented with survey or did survey mm -hmm. and supplemented with, with interviews. I'm not sure, but, uh, um, but I would have loved to see the user segmentation, like 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 whom did you target in terms of research, right? Because that's 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 really important. Um, uh, because till this point, I was expecting to see like, oh, this is our primary target user group. This is the user group that I'm going to do research with to understand. Um, or because if you, if you guys are going to figure out, if you guys are not sure who's your target user group, then 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 that that should have been like set up much earlier like hey you know mm -hmm. what like it, we did research with these set of people to figure out you know like like who has the most problems or or, or, or whom we can provide those values right mm -hmm. um that should have been like set up a little bit better it's totally fine for me uh because again like you guys have the right uh, uh data here but i think uh the way that the story was told might mm -hmm. be like could be like a little bit different either um you're talking about the target segment first and then and then walking walking me through uh, or or everybody through you know the 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 interviews the survey and then the secondary research and uh, or doing the reverse like um I I do not know who the users are so I'm gonna speak to these set of groups and then and then and then I figured out like this is my primary user group that that's that's the one that we're gonna proceed with so totally fine um and uh, in terms of survey I mean again like uh, it's fine um uh, but the sounding responses is, is like too little for a survey uh so. So I, in this case, I'm totally fine. This is a design challenge. So I understand that you guys might not have a lot of users to go and talk to and everything. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't know, like 17 is like too less. So um, we, we usually feel like 17 is very less. That's the data that, that I cannot like accept, but, uh, but it's fine. In this case, I totally understand. So, uh, but just in, in case, if you guys are gonna press on this elsewhere, um, I would probably like try to get get a little bit more data. Maybe at least like fifty users would be like good enough because uh, the sampling size is like really important for in terms of like like when it comes to survey uh, because survey answers are not always uh, correct mm -hmm. because you speak speak and collect the collect the data from the users users directly, right? So that's why we always like aim to get like more samples uh, to make sure that the data is not like wrong, wrong or right because something is like too less. If if 10 users just said ABC, ABC in the survey, you know, like it doesn't make any sense, right? So yeah, uh, that's that's the only point. Yeah. But again, like good work in presenting your initial research. Um and um, yeah, let's move on. Uh, let's move to the next slides. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Let's stop here. Um, so I don't know whether you guys uh, spoke to the users, had a consent form or anything. I'm not sure, but 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 users PI PII is like very important when it comes to research. Um, like here you have your users names and stuff. That's something like usually I recommend not to show. Uh, mm -hmm. Use because there's 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 there is this thing called users PII, which we call as personal identifiable in information. That includes their 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 name, their location, their I mean their city or their uh, their images. Those are those are some of the things that we don't tend to show. When, because especially when you're presenting to a public forum like this, right? Like like we would not even show it to our clients because like whom which person is not necessary because we would like to keep them under you know like 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 a secure environment. So that's what, so I would like, like next time, maybe you can just tell that as like a user one, or you could say like, if, 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 if these people are from like certain regions of North America, you can say like, like West Coast user or like East Coast user. So that's something that I would definitely recommend uh, doing because mm -hmm. PIA is something that uh, I would definitely recommend taking it seriously, especially in this current world where we have like a lot of um, uh, ways to identify users, right? So that's why uh, this is super important. Uh, yeah, let's move on. Um, affinity mapping, yeah, this is good. Um, I have I have no problem with this. Uh, let's move on value proposition. Okay, so let our app handle uh, how we might support users by reducing the amount of time. Yeah, this is something that that I was a little bit surprised 
uh, because it seems like to your secondary research and primary research that that users worried more about their their lifestyle choices and health and fitness but here i thought it switched gears into a into a into a into a recipe app that's one thing that i would like to like probe on like why because it seemed like uh, that had more insights on on users wanting to be like more healthy or having a healthy lifestyle um, here it seems like uh, oh if you're going to help them reduce the time in kitchen so in, into a recipe app that's just a small question if you guys have answer it's fine if you guys don't have totally fine yeah mm -hmm. uh, okay i guess no answer yeah this is fine um jenny um uh, motivations occurred Um, yeah, let's let's move on. Um, next slide, journey mapping. Um, so I, I understand again. This is a design challenge. You guys might not have had uh, enough time, but I would I would have like loved to see some of the opportunities, uh, in these different phases that you guys have right. Uh, because here you guys have the the actions that she might be doing. Um, and then and then and then like what is what is she feeling like what what's her what's her emotional uh, cycle is right and then maybe like just under that you guys could have mentioned that oh phase one these are the opportunities that we have how we can like utilize or or like help her with 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 the product that we are trying to build right so maybe like showing that would be like a little bit more impactful in this journey because this this journey map is good because this is more like a day in life journey map right like you're just showing like what's what's this user jenny's uh life is like in, probably in a day or something right um but um but 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 to make it more impactful i would definitely recommend having some of the some of the opportunities that that you guys could um like uh, provide for this particular user call journey through your digital service um if you guys want to want to like make it even more impactful i would also recommend um adding like uh, some of the platforms or like technologies that you guys could use in like each of these phases as well like that's also like good way to show like how um uh, we we can actually approach these problems as well uh, so that's that's one more feedback uh, let's move on um yeah these ones are good let me like uh, again these are like ideation so totally cool um uh, in terms of like the app itself a uh, like, quick question uh have you guys thought about using ai because like even now you know like if you guys see the chat we, we just got like 10 messages on like hey i'm not here but my AI is going to take notes for me right so so I was just wondering, like, because like everybody is using AI for something now, but have you guys thought about using AI in this app? Because it seems like a recipe recommendation app, and she, <clears throat> I mean, and, uh, and she's like, you know, like using the community features and everything. So I was just wondering, like, uh, was there any consideration on using AI uh, in this particular app? I think it really wasn't because of time, but yeah. we love the idea. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, my my other feedback or uh, my my question that I noted down as you guys were presenting was like, was there any competitor analysis that was done? Because uh, I mean, I'm not not trying to be a bad person, but uh, I could show like fifty apps which could which currently does this. Uh, um, like currently in the both in the Apple and Google market, right? Like there are like so many apps which currently does the same thing that that you guys are presenting. Again, this is good, but but. But uh, what is the differentiator, right? Like how you guys are doing it better? Um, because even if this this market currently gets launched into the market, right? Like 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 how like why Jenny would use it because there's like fifty other apps. Um, that's always a good uh, 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 activity to do. Like see the competitors, some of the biggest players in the market, see what they're providing, and uh, see if there is any white space in this particular market in which you, you guys are like taking advantage of, in which you guys are showing the differentiation factor, uh, which actually provides value to Jenny, which the other apps are not able to provide, right? Um, because or else, or, else the, or else this app is gonna be like one of those apps in the market um, where people could stumble upon, but, but but they might be like, you know, they might use or not use it because they have like 50 other choices. That's just another thing that I would say, like always like do some competitive analysis to show that, hey, it's not just like we just came up with the idea and designed it. We also looked at the competitors like and what they are doing and 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 and, and our app provides something that 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 the competitors are not, not providing, right? So that's that's also like super important. Um, yeah, but overall, I, th I would say like the rest of the things are cool. Um, uh, and the designs and the and the design system and uh, the explanation on why usage of colors uh, loved it. So yeah, so overall, overall good. Um, thanks, team. Do you guys have any other questions uh, for me? 
I'm good. That was helpful. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So I was able to help. Um. Yeah. Awesome. Good. Awesome. Uh, hi. I have one question. So you mentioned we can you we can combine AI features. <coughs> so I, did you feel uh did you suggest that we just use all AI generate to help our app or just add one or two functions in our app? Yeah, Can yeah, totally. Totally. Because you could use AI both for like users um front end functionality or you could use AI for your back end functionality too, right? Like for example, um one of the apps that my company was working on, uh, we used chat GPT to to create this particular chat service for for customers, like specifically to create recipes. Um, so so users could actually like uh, if, if they're cooking something, they could just pull up this app where you could like chat, talk to the uh, AI bot and ask them like, hey, how long do I need to boil potatoes if I need to like cook this thing, right? Mm, so it could be like thing that helps you with the cooking, or or you could totally use AI to to do recommendations in the back end, like as, as Jenny, your user is actually using this app and she's like trying out a few recipes, AI could totally like, you know, like start recommending her with like other recipes, uh, other recipes uh, as well. So, so that's what I was saying, like, uh, because there are like, there are like millions of AI tools now, which we could totally take advantage of. You could like plug it in as a primary uh, feature of your product or, or you could use one of those AI APIs to actually power up some of the features that you might be having in your app as well. Um, so 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 totally um, uh, up to you on like how to use AI for your product. I mean, I, I was just surprised that, uh, I mean, not surprised, I was just, I was just intrigued that, that, if, that whether you guys had a thought, maybe maybe you guys like excluded it because of like, as, as, as Angela was saying, maybe you guys didn't think about it because you guys didn't have like enough time. That's totally fine with me, yeah. Uh, it's totally cool. Thank you. Oh. Well, really great presentation. And I'm pretty sure there was a lot of amazing takeaways as well. Um, just to help rationalize your designs. Um, also have like a really impactful presentation. It's something that's going to be super useful in the real world. And I'm glad you guys got to experience it in a low stakes environment. So thank you for presenting your work. It's not. It's really that, not again, yeah, I just, I just want to say like uh, that's that's a lot of work. Uh, yeah. in, like, in such a short time so I want to I want to really like do a hats off for you guys like yeah that's like even though uh, like I have given all this feedback don't feel bad uh, but because because I think I think I think in like five weeks that's actually really a lot of work because we usually take five weeks just to do research um, so for you guys to show that much amount of work in like these five weeks I would like say like this is like really hard work and, and great job guys yeah. yes absolutely awesome thank you so much both team 15 and Halik um so I'm going to move on to the second team, so team five. Feel free to share your screen and start your presentation. All right, I'm the first person going. I Can everyone, everyone seeing the first slide? Yep. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Raymond, and I'm happy to introduce our design presentation for the Iterate Design Challenge. We are team five. And for our challenge, we designed an education-based feature for the language learning app known as Duolingo. Before going any further, I would like to introduce our team. We have Andy, Dexter, Molly, myself, and Vanessa. If you've used Duolingo, you probably recognize these avatar designs, which we are all, which we made within Duolingo. And these flags represent all the different languages that we are currently learning. For those of you who don't know what Duolingo is, it is a free language learning platform that utilizes gamification to teach 43 languages to over 500 million users worldwide. The way Duolingo works is like a language learning game. You pick a language you want to learn and it teaches you words and sentences using pictures, speaking exercises, animations, and quizzes. You earn experience points and move up levels as you learn more. And like most social media platforms, you could also follow your friends on the app as well and see how they're doing. It's currently the world's most popular language learning app. And it's one I've been using since 2017. I want to sh shift gears for a second and share a story. A few years ago, I was having coffee with a friend of mine. We were both using Duolingo to learn Spanish, and we've been learning for over a year at this point. Wanting to improve my Spanish further, I asked him if he wanted to practice. He said no. When I asked him why, he said, Raymond, I don't really have anyone to practice with, so I don't feel confident about having a conversation in Spanish. 
My friend's situation was not unique. Since that time, I had asked a few people who were learning Spanish through Duolingo if they wanted to practice, and they all had a similar response, namely that they didn't have anyone to that they could practice with consistently, and therefore they weren't comfortable speaking it. In the early part of our research, we came across this quote from a Reddit user in the thread where people were evaluating Duolingo as a language learning platform, and many had something similar to say. Duolingo is okay as it's fun and quick, but it will never make you fluent. You need to actually speak to a human to build your speaking ability. I invite everyone who has ever tried learning a language as an adult to reflect on your own past experience. Did you have a difficult time when it came to speaking and listening? How often did you practice your communication skills with people who are fluent? And if you are a Duolingo user, how much has the app helped you with your conversation skills specifically? It was through this lens that we arrived at the following problem statements. People who want to learn new languages struggle to find, connect, and communicate with native speakers to help practice their conversation skills. The solution that we came up as a group is Duolingo Chats, a feature that allows existing users of Duolingo to connect with native speakers in a language that they are currently learning. In the following slides, we'll be taking you through our research, sketches, wireframes, business considerations, and a high fidelity prototype. I'm now, I'm now going to hand it off to Dexter who will speak more closely to the research. Thank you so much, Raymond. After we learned the features and story of Duolingo, we did a competitor analysis and feature analysis to understand some major competitors of Duolingo and figure out their strengths and weaknesses. Our goal for this research is to see what other language platforms are good at and what features they did not implement in their platform. Then find out what opportunities and features that we could add to Duolingo to enhance language acquisition and cultural understanding. Lingbi offers a unique live language learning experience through real-time conversation. HelloTalk provides a global language learning community, enabling users to practice with latest speakers. Tandem is good at connecting language learners with latest speakers for effective learn language practice and exchange. It enables real-time conversations and interactions, creating a dynamic learning environment. Rosita Stone has a well-established reputation and comprehensive curriculum, providing a structured learning path. Manrise has a great feature called Learn with Locals, which pairs words with videos of native speakers, saying the phrase out loud and demonstrating the phrase. Bible offers structured course with focus on practical language skills. The interface and well-decided lessons are admirable. After we compared those language learning platforms, we were inspired by LinkB or how users connect with native speakers in the app. We enjoyed LinkB use of its in-app currency and how LinkB provides an in-app introduction to great new users and also saw what users can do next. We also liked when a user joined a meeting in Link B, it defaulted to a voice-only conversation with the option to turn on the camera to help users feel comfortable with their privacy concerns. After we complete the analysis, we got some inspiration on how to increase user engagement and dive into cultural learning. Next, we have Andy to talk about Duolingo classes and user research. While researching language learning applications, we did see that Duolingo had a platform that is no longer available called Duolingo Classes, a platform where users were able to have free or paid lessons with a host based on their skill level and interests. Sadly, it was discontinued earlier this year on January 23rd. Factors that could have caused the platform to be discontinued were possibly due to the lack of marketing and promotions, Duolingo users weren't made aware of the feature being added, as well as accessibility between devices being confusing. An example would be iPhone users having full access to lessons while Android users had to go to the website. Overall, user reviews and consensus for the feature was that Duolingo classes was poorly executed due to the lack of features, other competitors offered better solutions, and confusion of its usability. Additional research 
research that we conducted was creating and sending out a user survey to understand users who have varying experiences with language learning applications and resources. Questions that we want to focus on was why users want to learn language, struggles that they have when learning, as well as if they were interested if Duolingo implemented a virtual cultural exchange between users. We were able to receive 15 responses and it showed that 73% were interested in participating in the language exchange program, 93% showed the importance of cultural context when learning a language, as well as 86% of participants showed they had a shorter amount of time commitment, be so between 5 to 30 minutes to participate in the exchange program. We found that users wanted to learn a language based on the culture, food, and customs where the language is spoken. Struggles that users have when learning a language with a native speaker was that there was an issue of scheduling, for example, time zones or personal obligations, as well as feeling proficient enough to speak the language in itself. After gathering our research, we've moved forward into the define phase to help categorize our findings, assumptions, and create possible solutions and an understanding of the user. We created an affinity map to help categorize our research as well as maintaining Duolingo standards and branding to help keep track of the following categories. So we wanted to focus on the needs, experience, and current technologies and trends, but keeping in mind of Duolingo's awareness and we're lists. Going over our findings, we create possible solutions into how might we, keeping in mind of Duolingo's way of making language learning fun, making sure interactions are safe and productive, how do we gamify those interactions, and how do we create mutual cooperation and connections between users. I'm going to pass it over to Vanessa, where they will talk about the user and early stage mockups. Thanks. Meet some of our users, Kate and Dan. For the purpose of this presentation, these are our proto personas. Kate is a new Duolingo learner from the States. She's eager to travel to Mexico and wants to learn the language and understand the culture before she goes. Dan is an advanced learner from Mexico who is learning English so that they can connect with English speaking family and friends. Both Kate and Dan want to hear the natural way of speaking. They want to practice in a safe space where it's okay to make mistakes and they're motivated by Duolingo's gamified approach to learning, including leaderboards and leagues, experience points and streaks. We'll be catching up with Dan later as we're focused on Kate's journey from downloading Duolingo after seeing people on TikTok use it to learn Spanish. She completes her first lesson and notices a new option in her nav to practice. She clicks it and sees that she can connect with the native speaker and immerse in the culture she's learning. Using this user flow as our framework, our team began ideating on what this could look like. We did some crazy eight sketches and got into the screen flow of how the new feature would look and fit in the app. There are multiple pathways we looked at to accessing the new feature, including home and a new page on the nav, and decided ultimately on the practice hub as it's currently a place where users go to review and improve their language skills after they've shown some interest in the app. This feature would bring more value to the practice hub for free users following Duolingo's mission to make education universally available. So with this as our entry point, we brainstormed flows of how this experience would look by doing crazy eight sketches and voting on what we wanted to wireframe. Some highlights from this were the ability to connect with other language learners anytime, an option to participate in one-on-one -on -one or group sessions, providing a fun and safe space with games, topics, and phrases to choose from, and short interactions, just 10 minutes. Next, we took to sketches and built out a low fidelity flow of the interaction. Now I'm going to pass it off to Molly, who's going to talk about business considerations. Thanks, Vanessa. So as we went through the ideation phase and created sketches and wireframes, our team wanted to focus on making something that would not only be a fun and helpful feature for language learners, but also one that considered Duolingo's business goals. Because no matter how great a product is, if it can't be scaled or make money, it probably won't last long, as evidenced by Duolingo classes. So first, we wanted to know, how does Duolingo actually make money? Their revenue comes from their premium subscriptions, Super Duolingo, and their beta Duolingo Max, IAPs of their GEMS currency, the Duolingo English test, and ads to their free user base. But after reviewing investor letters, we learned the largest amount of revenue actually comes from their premium users. And this was surprising because only around 8% of their MAUs are actually paid subscribers. Considering their user base of about 575 million people, new paid subscribers through their subscriptions are a huge opportunity for growth. So for our feature, we focused on those premium subscriptions, 
and IAPs without compromising on Duolingo's core value of free language learning for everyone. The first opportunity we saw is when a user actually starts a chat. Since chats cost gems and gems can either be earned through Duolingo usage or purchased through in-app purchases, chats aims to increase revenue by encouraging more people to either buy gems or subscribe to Super or Duolingo Max, which would give them unlimited chats. The second uses Duolingo's partnership with ChatGPT through an in-chat live translate function available to Max subscribers. This would not only help users feel at ease when chatting with a native speaker, but it also tracks new vocabulary that you learn in chat, which can be studied later in the practice menu. So keeping our research and our business goals in mind, let's focus back on our user, Kate, and follow her journey through the prototype. Are you following me? Let me try again. We see the prototype. Uh, oh. But that's not the right screen. Can we press restart? Yeah. Can you press R, Dexter? There we go. Okay. So focusing back on our user, Kate, she has just created an account with Duolingo after learning about them through TikTok. After completing several lessons where she learns basic words and phrases, she receives a new practice menu in the navigation and a notification. Practice what you've learned, try chatting with a native speaker. Is it still not working? There we go. No, there we go. Okay, good. <laughs> she feels curious about this new feature, so she goes to the practice menu. She sees the chat feature at the top of the screen and decides she wants to practice with a real person. Then she sees the chat rules of conduct. She feels at ease knowing Duolingo wants to keep its users safe. So she reads the rules and agrees. Finally, she's greeted with the main chats menu where she can choose from two ways of connecting with native speakers, one-on-one -on -one or in a group practice room. So Kate being a little bit shy decides she would prefer a one-on-one -on -one chat. She wants to talk with someone now, but she doesn't feel comfortable enough yet to use the instant chat feature and match with a complete stranger. So she explores the page and then she notices Dan in the suggested user section. She shares, she shares interest with him and likes that he has some chat experience. So she goes to his profile to learn a little bit more about him. She sees he's been on Duolingo for a few years and he's from Mexico. She's always wanted to visit there. So she scrolls down to get a little more information and sees that he has a great rating from the chats he's been in. So she decides to request a chat. Next is the gym cost page, and this pattern is already familiar to users, so Kate knows what to do. If Kate has fun in the chats and wants to use it often, she might think about getting a super subscription later. For now, she pays 50 gems to join. She waits for Dan to accept her request, and he does. They'll speak in Spanish for five minutes and English for five minutes. Kate already knows how to say hello in Spanish, but she goes to the greeting topic anyway to feel more at ease. Her and Dan say hello and introduce themselves, but suddenly Kate forgets how to say nice to meet you in Spanish. Is it mucho gusto? Yes, mucho gusto, Dan. Next, she wants to talk about her favorite foods. So she goes to the food topic, and she talks to Dan all about how much she loves mole and tortillas. And Dan tells her that his family eats tortillas every morning for breakfast. Kate is having fun and feeling a lot more confident about the words she's learned from her lessons. And then Dan teaches her a new word, juego. He wants to play a game. So Kate goes back to the game menu and finds the game Heads Up. She's already familiar with this game, but she's curious if she can actually play it in Spanish. So she turns on her camera, reads the rules of the game, and starts the game to play. She gives clues for one minute to Dan, and he gets five words right. They also get a little bit of extra XP for that too. They continue their call, and at the five minute mark, it's time for Kate to be the native speaker. Dan says he wants to talk about travel, 
Kate isn't sure what to ask or what Dan's level is, so she goes to the topic and games menu and goes to the travel discussion. She asks about his favorite vacation and if he packs light. Dan isn't really sure what pack light me meant, but thankfully Duolingo has the Spanish translation for her to help explain. They continue to chat and Kate is glad the guided discussion is there to help her. Then they get a notification that there's only one minute left. They say their goodbyes and finally the chat ends. Kate had a really great time talking to Dan. He definitely deserves five stars. She gives him a follow so they can chat later and then goes back to doing more lessons. She can't wait to use chats again. So now Ray's gonna wrap us up with our final learnings. All right. So if we were to build this feature for real, these are some of the things that we would look out for and improve upon for future iterations. We would also add usability testing as well. Note that we've chosen to split these into three different categories, learning, efficiency, user engagement, and monetization, because these are what Duolingo had officially stated in their investor letter as being top of mind considerations to improve revenue. As we bring this presentation to a close, learning languages isn't easy, as most of us know from our own experience. If Duolingo's goal is to help its learners improve to the point where they, converse, where they can converse comfortably with native speakers, they'll need to make it easy, fun, and rewarding them and rewarding for them to connect to each other. We want to thank you so much for tuning into our presentation. We now open up to for feedback and questions from the audience. Okay, thank you so much, Team 15. Another amazing presentation right here. Um, Halik, it's all yours. Oh, yeah. yeah thank you. Yeah, I thought it was a great presentation. Um, I really liked the, the, the storytelling aspect of it. Let's just go to the beginning. I, I really like the opening, Raymond, um, because I, I, think, I think that's one thing that uh, many of the people forget to connect the problem. So... I, I totally liked the way that you started the story uh, with the with the personal uh, experience, right? And then asking a question to the user. So I thought I thought it was really great. Um, can we go to the beginning of the presentation? Yeah, maybe if you press R, it should take you to the first slide. So I just give you one second. That's okay, take your time. Just click the uh, pop-out menu on the left, Dexter. You're on my prototype right now, so you just need oh. to go to the introduction flow on the left side. If you go back to case study team five, yeah, press the uh, icon next to the Figma icon. Yeah, the top left. yeah, yeah. there you go. There you go. Oh. Click to introduction. Introduction. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Let's move on. I thought. I thought the intro was good. Let's go to the next slides. Um, go, yeah, and yeah, this is good. Next, next, um, yeah, the intro, you can just skip the intro, yeah. Um, okay, the research and discovery. Yeah, so you guys did the comparative features and analysis, second research, let's move on, yeah. Um, Let's go to the next slides, yeah. So the, you guys mentioned secondary research, but I, I'm assuming uh, when you guys say secondary research, like what, what exactly did you guys do? Uh, because I saw the commentary analysis, I saw some surveys, but when it comes to secondary research, I'm just wondering like when you guys say secondary research. Uh, I think for the secondary research, we wanted to talk about Duolingo classes, how they had a similar feature that they had you know, provided, but ultimately you know, this continued. Okay, okay, so, okay, cool. So. Okay, fair enough. Fair yeah, enough. Okay. Classes was kind of like our jumping off point for this whole project, um, because it was a, a pretty big feature that Duol Duolingo had at one point. Um, yeah. But just due to uh, people not really knowing about it, um, that was a lot of the the feedback that we got. When actually we we looked at probably over like twenty five Reddit threads. Um, actually, Duolingo uses Reddit as kind of uh, to get the pulse on their user base. So we actually used Reddit as well. Um, but all the comments that we saw were like, what is Duolingo classes? We have no idea what this is. Um, so we really wanted to take the essence of Duolingo classes and then put it into the current app as it is now. 
Mm. Okay. Cool. So that was part of part of our secondary yeah. research. Yeah, that's fair. And I, mean, then, you know, I just wish and then also like uh the business considerations, the investor letters, things like that. Cool. Yeah, no, no problem. Yeah, again, like, I, yeah, I just wish that was like uh, uh, upfront stated because I was, I saw the uh, the competitor analysis, I saw the survey, but, but this one, I was like, oh, I thought this was a filler slide. I did not think this was the the second research, but yeah, maybe just just a little bit clarity on that alone. Yeah, that, that's all. Um, the next slide, the survey slides. Yeah, this is something that I wanted to say even for the team one and also for you guys. Uh, yeah, I understand that you guys have the survey and the responses and then the statistics, but 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 what's the insight that that's being gathered from the surveys, right? That's that's one thing that that I would probably like um would love to see on on the presentation itself. Uh, that would be an, that would be an interesting thing to see, like because most people when they do surveys, yes, I can easily say, hey, seventy percent of the uh, of, of my users said they wanted to do X, Y, Z, but but why, right? Uh, so that's something that, that would be like interesting to show, like by survey, we learned this is the statistics, but but this is why they want to do this. So is there a way to connect your your, your survey statistics with, with an actual insight? So that's that would be an interesting thing to show in terms of presentation, uh, but overall, but, but, I, but I still thought this was really great, um, the intro and the, and, the, and the research part, but yeah, uh, let's move on uh, to the next slides. Um, yeah, I, I have no problem with the divine section, so let's move on. Again, I thought this was a great presentation and showing all of your work. Um, I have only like a few things which I'm going to like point out. Um, so let's actually move to the design portion. Uh, like one thing I did not understand is like, uh, like in, in, in the prototype is like, why do I have to go back and forth to choose the topics? Uh, is there a reason? Um, is there a reason, like when I'm in the chat service, like the, I, I forgot Kate and Dan, I'm guessing that's the that's the name of the people. So when they were chatting, like, is there a reason why they had to go back and forth in terms of choosing topics? Can't they keep chatting there itself? Or is or or you think there's a way for us to, for them to choose the topics right, right in the chat screen? Because I thought there was like a lot of back and forth, considering there's only like 10 minutes available uh, for them to chat. Um, um, going back and forth, choosing topic, and then going back, um, starting the conversation. It's going to take a lot of time. Uh, that's just that's just like my personal uh, thought. Uh, but again, like if you guys have a reason, it's fine. I would love to hear it. If not, it's still okay. Yeah. I think mostly it was just so we would have enough room to actually be able to show all of the the phrases to help people be able to read them a little bit better. Um, but that that's definitely something that we could iterate on further, maybe having a smaller menu for the topics at the top and then maybe bringing the the words and phrases down just like right below it. Um, but yeah, the, the in chat menu was definitely something that we bounced back and forth around with a lot. Um, so we'd love to we'd love to do like Duolingo does and just a B test the crap out of it. <laughs> you know, um, I think they run like 500 A B tests every quarter. Uh, so we'd love to to have the time to be able to do something like that with the in chat menu. Cool. Another thing we were considering doing as well, um, given more time and if there's like the ability to test, uh, having the users pre-select topics before they enter the chat as well. Um, that was just something we'd also thought about. The yeah, the main reason we brought up topics at all is because um we were afraid that if we were to just send users into the wild into chat rooms with no with nothing then they might not sure what to say and so yeah. the topics were just feel really uncomfortable because yeah. that was a lot of the feedback we got from the user surveys almost everyone said that like shyness and then just not having any practice with speaking was like one of their main reasons not to practice with a native speaker uh yeah. So that was kind of the the thoughts that we went into developing this was like, how many ways can we put in this feature to make people actually want to go and use it and actually start speaking? Makes sense. Uh, yeah. Uh, can we just go to the competitive analysis slide? Um, this is such a great presentation, right? I don't know about you guys. I thought I thought it was a nice presentation. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, cool. Uh, so which one? Which one would would you guys like? This is just a small, simple question. Which one would you guys rate as the best 
conversational sharing app apart from Duolingo? I mean, I know you guys are trying to develop this, uh, but which ones, which ones you guys personally recommend or which ones you guys think are actually doing a better job? So the, the only ones on this list that actually, well, Hello Talk Tandem and Lingby are apps that focus on connecting people and having conversations. Uh, Hello Talk is, is probably the lowest tier. Uh, Tandem does a very good job. It works like a very much like a social media platform where you look for people, you look at their profiles, you send a message, and if the other person accepts, and you can chat. Uh, Lingby uses a different system where it's a random pairing. So you express an interest to chat, you tell the system, and they match you with someone. So as far as the chat features go, like once the chat is is happening, they're very similar. Like you can you can chat without looking looking at each other. You can activate a you can uh, show each other. Sorry, you can see each other through the camera, or you could do a video chat. It's mostly the difference between them is the approach of how you get connected in the first place. And there's hard to say which one's better, but um, they it's just a difference of approach. But it's kind of no one really focuses on like a holistic approach. I feel like like a lot of apps are either like a chatting app. Some of them are vocabulary, um, like Duolingo. You know, they're very like gamified vocabulary phrases. Um, and then Babbel is pretty good, but it is quite expensive. Um, so that is another another barrier to entry for a lot of users is the price. Yeah, I mean, I was just wondering because there are also like uh, apps like what's the name? Um, I think it's called Preply, uh, which which is more of a tutor based kind of like an app where you can do subscriptions for like five dollars a month, and uh, and it would totally like give you a tutor to actually practice. Um, so I was just wondering, like, yeah, um, like whether whether you guys took a look at different spectrums because it's not again. I I, I do see the angle that you guys came from where you guys are trying to come up with the self learning and then also like to in inject chatting into it. Uh, but I, but I, yeah, my thought is again to wonder like whether you guys thought about like a, other ways of allowing people to chat. Uh, but overall, overall, I actually love the presentation. I didn't have much questions because I thought it was thorough. Uh, but again, as I said, like uh, yeah, a few few tweaks in the areas of maybe like design questions for me and also like survey data, seeing how uh, those survey data turns into insights, right? So that's all, but overall great, great work guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Really appreciate your feedback. It's really helpful. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Halik, for the second round of feedback. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the final presentation for the day. An amazing start to this presentation series, the three-day presentation series. Amazing set of presentations. Um, and it was a lot of work. But you guys did it and also went that extra mile to present yourself and opening up for feedback and critique. Um, hats off for that. And Holly, thanks. Thank you again for like a thorough like analysis of all the presentations. Is your feedback was really grounded on like a real world experience and you know, helping people. Um, so again, like lots of feedback and takeaways from there uh, for sure. Um yeah, yeah, well, thank you so much, Bye -bye. everyone. Sorry, Holly, were you adding something? Oh, no, I said thanks for boosting my ego. That's all, yeah. Um, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, uh, happy to be here. I'm lo I, I love seeing all this work, really, even like, you know, whenever I come to these presentations and see these things, you know, uh, it just, again, like, it helps me identify some of the new ways that people are trying to approach problems and how they're trying to present it, right? So, yeah, like, like thanks for showing me this because I'm also always learning. So, uh, thank you, team. Awesome. Yeah, so with that, uh, we can wrap this first day up. Uh, so thank you all for joining again. So I'll be, this is recorded and will be shared on uh, YouTube channel and we'll be announcing on Discord as well if you want to like go back to it. Um, yeah, besides that, thank you all for joining today and then we'll see you again tomorrow for the second day of presentations. Thank you all. Thank you, Ruben. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Hey everyone, on behalf of InterUX, we'd like to thank you so much for watching this week's event. If you like the content, please leave a like and subscribe. We'll have this every Thursday at 5.30 Pacific Time. Join our Discord in the description to find out more.